My name is Julia Marrera, and on behalf of the Student Senate, I want to thank you all for coming out today. As students, it's important to be aware of the decisions being made that not only affect us personally, but future students as well. This is why the Student Senate felt that it was necessary to gather students, staff, and faculty today to discuss such an important issue. We are here today united as one BCC community to show opposition to the governor's proposal. For those of you who are already aware of what is included in the current proposal, we thank you for being here. For those of you who are not aware and who have not yet read the proposal, we'd like you to take this time and listen and stop by our information table. The Student Senate has also provided free drinks and desserts and we'd like you to help yourselves to those as well. To represent all levels here at BCC, the Student Senate has invited two faculty members, a student and a staff member to speak about how this proposal will affect all members of the BCC community. So at this time, I'd like to welcome English professor Donnie McGee. She is the statewide vice president of the MCCC and the coordinator of political action for faculty and professional staff at all 15 community colleges. So without further ado, Donnie McGee. Thank you very much. It is, it is delightful to be here on, on so many counts. I was not supposed to be here today, but at the last minute I realized this was too important event an event for me to miss. It is democracy in action. It is really about student engagement, about student voices, and about campus, uh, a campus community coming together to speak out for our community colleges. I was a student here many years ago, and I wasn't a student activist, but I was very much like the students who walk through this open door and expect to realize dreams at an affordable, in an affordable way and to recognize that they may not understand what it is they want to be when they grow up. And I, I became a professor here, not because that was my dream, but because I was able to bridge the gaps between where I was and eventually where I wanted to go. And I think part of this community college proposal that the governor has put out today is really problematic for us in a variety of ways. It's problematic because, for one, it, it calls for a redefinition of our workforce mission and it calls for putting money into workforce development that we're already doing. We do not want to be putting more emphasis emphasis on workforce development if it is going to be at the cost of taking away from the multifaceted and open mission that allows us to serve every student who walks through our open doors. We're about bridging gaps in confidence, in readiness, and building dreams, and allowing people to go wherever it is they desire to be, transfer obligations in uh, four-year schools, all of those are part of our mission. Centralization, which is a key part of the governor's proposal, is not gonna help us. It's gonna take the community out of community colleges, make us less responsive to the towns and cities and students that we serve, and it's also going to be taking away from some of the needs that our students are faced with as they walk through this door. The real importance here, and I think that all of us, a lot of us here in this audience and around the state are uh, emphasizing tomorrow, we are going to the State House to say, it's not centralization that we want, but funding. Without funding, we cannot serve students effectively. We need funding so that students can complete the journeys that they start here, so that they don't go home with student debt, so that their student fees aren't increased. In the last decade, we have been underfunded chronically and substantially by 42%. How can we be increasing enrollment and responding to the needs from everybody in the community uh, and not have more, more resources? So my excitement about being here today is that it lets people know, it lets the public know, and it opens the door to the activism that needs to happen on this campus 
on campuses and in communities across the state that will let the public know that unless you fund us, we cannot do the job that you expect us to do. I want to thank many people for today's event and for the uh, organizing for tomorrow's uh, statewide event at uh, Gardner Auditorium that's going to really bring light upon the plight that our community colleges are facing. I'd like to certainly thank the administration and the uh, uh, faculty president, uh, faculty senate and professional staff senate. I certainly want to thank student governance and student engagement office in particular, uh, Nicole Collins, uh, Julie Marrera, and Hunter, uh, let's see, Hunter Parent uh, Whitmore for putting the energy in having the courage to speak up for community colleges. They need your voices. I also want to say uh, Hunter Parent Whitmore, I don't know, I think many of you may have read his op-ed pieces from the student perspective, the importance that he communicated about what our colleges are all about was most impressive. I'm not really sure what he has decided upon when he grows up, but he'd be a great journalist. And he models all that we in, in this audience and across this campus need to do to, to stand up for, we, for what we believe in, get involved, and uh, let our legislators know so they can hear our voices and then we can hold them accountable. So thank you for the opportunity to speak and thanks to everyone who's been involved with this effort. Thank you, Donnie. Now I'd like to welcome English professor Howard Timberg. He is the Vice President of the Faculty and Professional Staff Senate. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, Nicole. It's good to be here. I send you greetings from the uh, Senate, uh, the Faculty and Professional Staff Senate, whose mission is to uh, help promote the integrity of the academic mission of the college. Um, we are in solidarity with all of you uh, as you advocate for public higher education. I, uh, you know, I've been thinking about my own past in the last few weeks as uh, Governor, Governor Patrick's proposal has been, been going around and uh, thinking about uh, my own background, my own parents. I am the uh, son of immigrants, uh, first generation to go on to college. Uh, my uh, parents were tailors, um, and it could very well have been that uh, any of my siblings might have been gone, gone directly into that line of work. but. Uh, my parents thought there ought to be options uh, for those uh, who, who chose to uh, go into higher education. And so after the battles were, were fought, uh, all, I and my siblings were indeed uh, encouraged to go on uh, to earn college degrees. And you know we've got a few PhDs, a JD, and we're doing OK. Uh, all this is to say that uh, you know, we ought to, anyone who enters the doors of a community college ought to have all kinds of options, uh, whether to get the workforce skills, the training, uh, whether to transfer, whether to get an upgrade uh, just for the moment in order to get the pay raise. Uh, the community college has been called democracy's open door and it means just that, that people can walk in and in some, well, some ways fulfill their dreams. Those dreams may very well be uh, workforce development and get that particular job. You know, I, I teach literature as well as writing and I feel that, um, that there is real meaning in, in the humanities, a real relevance for those of us who teach literature. Uh, you know, it's not as if you have to memorize the, uh, the famous dialogues from Shakespeare, but it seems to me you can learn something about what it means to be a human being when you read great works of literature. Uh, we're all about in the humanities to uh, promote this idea that all of us, uh, each of us, is a citizen in a greater community. And as Donnie said, it would be a shame uh, that we somehow lose sight of that important C word in our title, our tie, our closeness, our proximity to the community itself. Um, that is our strength. Uh, we respond in very quick and effective ways to the needs of the community. It would be a shame indeed if uh, the power brokers uh, in Boston uh, would be holding all the strings. Uh, so the Senate is with you in solidarity. Uh, we believe in the comprehensive mission of BCC. Uh, we are here to serve all kinds of students in all kinds of ways. So we say to the governor, uh, please do not narrow our mission. Help us restore funding. Uh, don't streamline it. 
uh, restore it and restore and promote the comprehensive mission of the community college. Again, we are in solidarity with you. Uh, good luck tomorrow. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, Howard. Now I'd like to welcome our student Senate President, Nicole Collins. Hi, everybody. Um, first of all, I just want to thank you all for coming out. I know it's really windy over here. And uh, just come to listen to what we have to say today. Um, basically, you know, when we heard about this governor's proposal a couple weeks ago, um, at first we didn't really know what to think about it. And over the last couple of weeks, I've really spent a lot of time trying to listen to both sides of the issue. And it's really come down that the Senate just does not endorse this. Um, there's a lot of things in the proposal that we don't feel um, is necessary for our community college. I kind of want to go through with you guys, for those of you who aren't aware of what's in the proposal, kind of some of the biggest problems that we have with it. Um, one of the first things is the mission statement. Basically, in the proposal, they're suggesting, well, if the proposal is passed, uh, the governor is giving, um, until next year, the Board of Trustees to change our mission statement to have it aligned with state's goals. And well, in maybe some community colleges, the state's goals would be that of the community college, but in ours, we focus on workforce development and transferring. Um, what they wanted to focus on is more on workforce development. I think transferring here is an important piece for Bristol Community College. We have students that come here that go on to four-year institutions and they get amazing careers. I think that if we move forward in that direction and change our mission statement to align with the workforce development um, goals of the state, that we might lose that piece and there might not be as much emphasis on the transferring as much as there needs to be. And we should be asking students to kind of set their goals higher and look forward and look for the future and not just kind of settle. One of the other things that I wanted to mention was they're basically going to change kind of how we're governed as a school. Right now, um, the governor appoints our student, I'm sorry, our, trust, our board of trustees. But in the proposal, he's suggesting that the governor will now appoint the trustees and appoint the chair. Some of the, something that they're going to take away from the trustees is taking the power to hire, a fire, and um, evaluate our presidents of our community colleges. Basically, they say that they don't feel that it's fair right now because the Board of Trustees has pretty much all of the p power to, um, to hire the presidents, and they want to make it more fair. But in the proposal, it says that possibly a trustee member may be a part of a search committee to recommend someone for the job. And I don't feel like that. These are the people representing us in our community, and they're the people that know best. So I don't think it's going to be fair that if we move forward with this proposal that the Board of Higher Education will actually have to say in the hiring, firing our presidents. One more thing that I kind of want to talk to you guys about is the way like, that they measure success here at Bristol Community College. Um, the state measures success by if you are here for three years, you get your degree in that time, you forget your degree, and you go right into a career. What they don't measure success is if you come here, you get your 30 credits, and you transfer to an amazing school like Brown, you don't really look well for statistics for Bristol Community College. And that's basically how they're going to decide how much money goes to our colleges. They're going to look at your performance evaluation. And if the performance evaluations aren't revamped and updated, then it's not going to reflect what Bristol Community College is really going to do. Real quick, you guys, so one of the goals for this was to kind of get you guys kind of motivated to let you guys know what the going on with the proposal and how it's going to affect you. Tomorrow, um, there's going to be a bus leaving here at I believe it's 8.30 to go up to the State House for um, State Advocacy Day. All the public higher education institutions across the state will be going up to the State House to talk to their legislators about many issues. Um, for us, as a community college, this is definitely on the forefront, but we're also going to be talking about increased financial aid, um, need-based financial aid, and increased funding for public higher education. So I, I urge you guys to Look us up on the Bristol Community College Facebook page. It's the Bristol Community College Student Senate. And if you guys are able to come up tomorrow to grab the flyer and email Kathy Burns and let her know that you guys are going to be coming up tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Speaking on behalf of President Spraga, I'd like to welcome Vice President of Students, Steve Ozuck. Thank you, Julia. Good afternoon, everyone. 
What a wonderful turnout. Any of you who know Jack Sprager certainly know that this is where he would have liked to be. And unfortunately, he couldn't be here today, so he asked us to uh, please speak on his behalf. But this is definitely where he wanted to be. In fact, when he first heard of this 10 days ago, this only started to get planned 10 days ago, which is why this is a wonderful turnout. The first thing he said uh, to Nicole was he would volunteer to speak. But unfortunately, time didn't allow him to do that. I really have two points I want to make. One is I'm really here to kind of rally people up for tomorrow and to really give praise to the students who have taken this seriously and decided to take this issue on. And secondly, I want to point out some things about the proposal that aren't in the proposal. From my perspective, things that should have been there but weren't. You've already heard about the things that are in there that people are addressing. I want to talk about the things that aren't in there. But first, a little bit about organizing this day. Their names have already been mentioned, but I really, really, really think we have to give a big round of applause to Nicole, to Julia, and to Hunter, who have really, in just 10 days, basically, put this all together. They were inspired less than two weeks ago at a statewide meeting where they met with their peers from many of the other community colleges and decided to do this. And it's just so inspiring for me to see that they're taking this serious because they know that the potential impact of any reorganization has a real, has a potential of a serious impact on the future lives of the students here. And I praise them because for most of these students working on this, the impact isn't going to affect them. It's going to affect future generations of students. And for them having the insight and the foresight and the willingness to take up this cause in support of the students who they don't even know at this point, to me is wonderful. So how about a round of applause for these organizers? Because they certainly are our future leaders. So let's talk about what I was disappointed in, in terms of the proposal. What I was surprised not to see in the proposal was first and foremost, you know what, you folks at the community colleges, you do a fantastic job. You know what, you students at the community colleges, congratulations. Congratulations for what you have to endure, for what you have to persevere in order to get a college education. The students here at Bristol live in the real world. They live in the world of family responsibilities, of raising children, of worrying if they're going to be able to put food on the table, of worrying if they have enough money to put gas in their cars to get to school, of having jobs that they have to go to. That's the real world. That's where they live. And so this notion of success being measured by some external factor that doesn't really resonate well in the real world doesn't work. That's what we didn't see, and I wish we had seen that. Congratulations to the students. I wish we had seen to all the faculty and staff at the community colleges. You know what? You guys do a fantastic job. You do a great job. You do this, you this, you do this. You take every student through your door, no matter where they come from. Every student, no matter how good or how ill-prepared they are. And you welcome them in and you take them to where they need to go. You guys do workforce development. You do English as a second language. You do GED. You do adult basic education. You do developmental coursework. And you bring every student along on this journey who wants to go along on this journey. Thank you for that. You do a great job. And then if they wanted to say, but in addition to that, we'd like you, we'd like to focus on another piece that you're already doing, but we'd like you to do more of that. If the proposal had come across in that way, I think it would have resonated a lot better with a lot more people. But there was no acknowledgement of that, and for that, I'm a little disappointed. The proposal doesn't talk about the compre comprehensiveness of the community colleges. I was at a meeting recently where someone said, the reason why this proposal is out there because it's, we're, we're too focused in just one direction. That's anything but the truth. We are focused in so many directions that that's part of the problem when you don't get sufficient funding. Community colleges are expected to do all those things that I just mentioned a couple of, a couple of minutes ago, and yet we don't get the resources that we need in order to do that. So there is one part of the proposal that everyone does agree with, and that is that we need the more, fun more funding. In that part, there's no disagreement at all. But it's the only way we're ever going to 
reach our mission is to get that, those additional resources so we can do all that we currently do and in addition start to do some additional focused work on the workforce development. The transfer issue was already spoken about. There's no, no, I'm sorry, Hunter, one of our students, read every word of the proposal and every word of the outside language and he found the word transfer mentioned only one time. That tells you what the proposal thinks about that half of our mission of students transferring on to other institutions. And I'm very disappointed that that wasn't in the proposal. And the last part that I was really disappointed in was that there was no acknowledgement of local correspondence. There was no connection to our local community in the development of the proposal because had there been there's no doubt in my mind that people would have impressed upon the writers of the proposal that we do all those things already, that we do workforce development. To say we don't do workforce development is to slam what comes out of our center. All the work that comes out of our center. Isn't workforce development also preparing someone to go on to a four-year school to get their bachelor's degree and then maybe their master's degree and then move on? Isn't that also workforce development? There's no acknowledgement of that. And lastly, if there had been any communication with our local business leaders, I think they would have got a different picture than the picture that happens to be in their minds. I think they would have found out that that's not what's dogging businesses around here, the lack of work with Bristol Community College. Bristol Community College does an excellent job of working with the local business community and meeting their needs. What the businesses are looking for are their own resources in order to do more work. Because in order for them to come to us and ask us to provide training, they need resources too. That's what they're lacking. They're not lacking the tie to Bristol Community College. So for all these reasons, I was disappointed, and many of us are dis disappointed in the proposal. And for those reasons, I support the students' efforts in organizing this today. I am so delighted that they decided to take this issue on. I believe this is just the beginning. There may be more uh, opportunities and more events in the future. I understand we're getting close to a full bus tomorrow. I think that's a wonderful thing also. This is picked up very slowly, but it seems like it's really catching on now. And I will be on the bus with all of you tomorrow that are going. So thank you very much, and thank you again to all the students. Thank you, Steve. And on behalf of the Student Senate, I'd like to thank all the speakers that came out today to talk about this important issue.